Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to episode number five of the Naked Wine Podcast. Yes, episode number five. Numero cinco. <laughs> and today we are going to be talking about how to spot a natural wine at your local wine store. And this is a Grocery very store, important skill. Gas to have. station, wherever you are, Middle America. <laughs> You're listening to us, and so now you love natural wine. Where do you find it? How do you spot it? What do you look for on the label? The ins and outs of the confusing wine shelf that is sometimes daunting, but it won't be right. after listening to us. Because it is a tricky thing, because as we've discussed in previous episodes, there's no official you know, label for natural yeah, wine. Yeah, it's not. There's no big no stamp. Sticker. There's yeah. no like certified organic stamp. Yes. I mean, there is, but there's not no, for natural, not right? for <laughs> certified natural wine. Although, another episode, France has come out with new legislature and law to make a uh, natural wine Which is certification. super exciting. So it'll be great. Anyways. So what are we drinking today, Mr. What Remington? What are we drinking? <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but Miss and I loves Pet Nats. Woo! Lightly sparkling, mm -hmm. rosé Pet Nat. This is from Purity Wines, showing you guys here on YouTube. This is the wine label. It says Purity Purity. It is Kerfluffle Take Two. <laughs> I wonder what happened to Take One, but we are drinking Kerfluffle Take Two, a rosé pet nat from Purity Wines. And it is delicious. It is very zippy. It's it's a, it's a dry bubbles, and it's got this lovely pink color. Very lovely. Like... Kind of a you know I don't go to pink. many you know bridal showers or anything, but I feel like this is what the girls would be <laughs> drinking while they're doing the dress shopping and all that jazz. It just looks it's beautiful, and not only it is. is it beautiful in color, but it's super tasty. Yeah, it's to me I get like notes of citrus. Um, it's, it's not super fruity to me. A little bit more of like a. <sighs> It's got some nice acidity, but not too acidic. Definitely it's, well balanced. It's very well balanced. Teeny touch of sweetness. Uh, but nice acidity, so it totally evens out in that regard. When I yeah. first opened it, I got a, just a little hint of barnyard, which is a great thing. Yeah, we love that. Not anything crazy, people. Just <laughs> a little nice titch of, oh, I'm in the horse's hay or something <laughs> like that. Um, it's delicious. It's really nice. Zippy. I would. It's like 11% alcohol, so mm -hmm. not super high in alcohol. Mm -hmm. Pet Nats range. I mean, you know, you – probably listen to our pet net episode by now and they'll go from yeah. kombucha like acidity yeah. to too sweet to, to bone dry bone dry and everything in between and so it's, it's definitely an adventure when you open up a pet net it really is and i think that this one is would pair perfectly with a lot of things um we just had a little bit of like cheese and crackers right before All those we started cheese and crackers that's like it was delicious we had a, basically an adult lunchable we did have an adult lunchable which is kind of our one of our favorite dinners to be honest yeah adult lunchable i think is like our go to uh -huh. <laughs> yeah minus the snickers bar that comes in, <laughs> yeah. in it but um i don't know if we said this already but it's 100% carignan yes tell 100 me 100% carignan but it also had i think why it's called take 2 is because there was something missing once they first tasted it. Hmm. So to add complexity, they added a pet nat mix of Grenache and Sin Salt oh. to the top and said, now it's perfect. Okay. So, so there we go. So take two. We like take two. From the Sierra Foothills, Northern California. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure it's bottled and uh, produced in Richmond. 2020 Carignan. 2020 Carignan in Richmond, California. Yep. Yep. All right. So let's hop into it. Let's do it tips for how to spot a natural wine wherever you are these are kind of like the three categories what's number one miss um number one is you want to look at who's importing it mm -hmm. um or is distributing it and you can usually find that on the back of the label absolutely correct there are a bunch of news articles about this nowadays but honestly it's one of my favorite tips because there is no natural stamp yeah. on a um on a bottle of wine but if you know some of your favorite importers you're well on your way to finding and spotting natural wine wherever you are um distributors that could be a little bit of a different story we'll get into it here in just a second but another category Looking for Vin de France, Vin de España, okay. Vin de Italy, anything super simple on uh, the front label that doesn't really say 
you know, Burgundy or Bordeaux or Beaujolais or from mm-hmm. this crew, something really simple. It's kind of a rebellious act. Just putting Vigne de France yeah. on your wine label is another little trick. Yeah. And lastly, you can look at the label art. So, you know, you, you've seen a million of the traditional wine labels. Um, they've got, they're very blocky. They've got like a box. They have like chateau and, and it's, it's not super creative. They kind of all look the same. But if you see like a very hipster label that looks like it was drawn by like a crayon by a four-year-old. <laughs> they, those exist. Then, then it's, it's probably likely that it might be a natural. new school natural winemaker. Yeah. So but let's, basically look for like some hipster art. Hipster art. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with pictures of chateaus on the label. No. But... These are tips, and these aren't steadfast rules that apply all the time, but there are some tips. So let's talk about importers really quick. I love, before, when I heard of this, I'm like, who cares? Like, mm-hmm. I look for, generally, I try to find the, who produced it, the state or the country, and uh, the type of grape. But I was like, turn it over, look for the importer's name. Like, okay, is that really necessary? But the more you look into it, the more helpful you realize it really is. So let me rattle off some of my favorite importers that import natural wine or low intervention wine specifically. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So these guys are, and it's a little mix from all over the world, but if you see this name, it's kind of like the stamp of approval that Kendra and Remington, the <laughs> naked wine stamp of approval. If you yes. see these importers' names, we're like, we, we would drink – all their wines. Now, pretty much. The ones we're about to list, do they exclusively only yeah. do natural wine? Okay. Yeah, exclusively only do natural wine, low intervention wine, at least organically farmed with like native awesome. yeast and some of those other things that we had spoken about before. All right. So we have Louis Dresner, Zev Rovine, Kermit Lynch, Rosenthal Wine Merchants, Selection Massal, Jenny and Francois Selections, Percy Selections. Sculo de Vino, Amy Atwood Selections, PDX Wine, and Selection Natural. Mm-hmm. This is kind of a long list, but there are there are a lot more. This is not even all of them. There's a lot more smaller importers and maybe some that we even forgot. But um, since this one, since this one's yeah, from this. California, yeah, it's not going to yeah. have an Im- who it's imported by on the label. But um, let's talk about a couple of these. Kermit Lynch. Kermit Lynch is kind of like an OG importer. Yeah. Started importing in 1970s uh, to the United States. Had a big emphasis on French wine. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been up? You used to live up in SF. Have you ever been to Berkeley? I've never been to the storefront. In no? Berkeley, no. You'd love it. Yeah. Um, you used to live up in the Bay, right? I was in San Francisco, but I never really made it over to Berkeley yeah. that much, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I split some time, and I'm up in SF a bunch. Um, yeah, you and are. I made it over to Berkeley. It's kind of fun. Uh, take the Bard over, and uh, there's a bunch of great wine stuff. But anyway, Kermit Lynch, there's a storefront in Berkeley. So if you're up in, in NorCal, up in the Bay Area, you can actually go check it out. Um, it's quite cool. Rosenthal Wine Merchants is another one that focuses on like French, Italian, and Swiss wines. There's a great restaurant called Heirloom up in San Francisco cool. that my friends and I like to frequent. That is kind of like a local bore focus. They only like serve Rosenthal. Um, so that's, a, that's another good thing. Like at a restaurant too, if you're at a restaurant and the wine list might not say, but the bottle comes to you, you can turn it over and, and look and see if you recognize some of these. Um, Scuola de Vino is up in NorCal, right close to the... Scuola de Vino. Yeah, Scuola, Scuolo. I, I say Scuola de, de Vino. I'm not... A, do you speak Italian at all? No. I definitely don't speak Italian. I'm from Minnesota. I was lucky to learn some Spanish. <laughs> so another Bay Area? Wow, yeah, that one's lot. right by the, um, the airport, and they primarily... I think they only import Italian. Okay. So a lot of Italian wines we drink uh, have that stamp on the back. But uh, it'll be... Sometimes it's a stamp. Sometimes it's just the name mm-hmm. on the back label. But um, have you found your – do you ever look for that? When you go to I do, store? but, I mean, this is – I don't even have, like, all of these ones here memorized. Remington has done a lot better on his homework for for kind of, like, knowing the, the importers and distributors. It, so if I'm ever, like, unsure, I usually just shoot him a text message. Yeah. <laughs> that works. That's what friends are for. You know what? And if you're ever unsure, shoot us an email. Yeah. Nakedwinepodcast at gmail.com. Mm-hmm.
don't count on us respond replying right away if it's like no. 10 at night on a friday and you're at the wine store but we'll, we'll get to you totally. but it's an easy trick instead of remembering all of the umpteen million yeah. natural wine producers in the world memorize some of the importers mm -hmm. and you'll be golden so let's talk about distributors okay really quick and is this specifically just la so th this little list that I comprised is in LA, but I know some of these also distribute in other parts of the United States as well. Okay. So we have importers bringing wine in the US and then we have distributors distributing wine in the different regions in the United States. Um, let me list a couple of these here. So if you're in the LA region, a lot of times the wine bottles won't have, it, I put this little tidbit in here that California doesn't require yeah. you to put a stamp or name who distributed the wine. I prefer if they did, because once again, if you know some of the distributors, mm -hmm. you can just look for that. Um, but here are some that I really like in the LA region. Nomadic Distribution, Goat Boy Selections, Jose Pastor Selections, Critical Mass Selections, Amy Atwood, Oliver McCrum Wines. Um, just the smallest, there are a ton more dozens in fact but um you remember we used to, we used to go to wine tastings all the time at this store called lincoln fine wines mm -hmm. in venice we love lincoln fine and wines. they would have natural nights some nights and yeah remember when it's natural night like i think nomadic's been there before nomadic, or like and then they'll have one of the reps of mm -hmm. there and it's all like the nomadic wines that you're tasting and with with the reps there um it's another little trick that you can look for if they decide to put the distributor's name on so oh. real quick like what would you say the like what's the biggest difference between the importer and the distributor well it's high level in order to bring wine into the united states it has to be imported mm -hmm. and another thing you can be an importer and also a distributor at the same time okay so like amy atwood i'm pretty positive that amy atwood um, selections is it? Pretty sure. Amy Atwood Selections, yes, is an importer and a distributor. Okay. And so the importer will, their job is to go um, whatever country they fancy because wine is certainly made outside of the big California, bigs, California <laughs> and Spain and France and Italy. Like almost every country on planet Earth makes some sort of wine. And they form relationships with winemakers that. Um, or making wine that fall under the importer's kind of like ethos. Mm -hmm. um, and they say, hey, you're not in the U.S. yet. Let me let me bring you to the United States. I'll represent you. Got it. And let's blow this up. Let's blow this shit up. And um, you'll, be under our, you'll be under our label. And we'll, we'll yeah. do our best to make you popular in the United States. Where the distributor will um, take on like a selection of wines and be responsible for distributing it in a region. Okay. Um, yeah, that's kind of the quick high level. I have aspirations to be a wine importer one day. Wouldn't that be fun? I would we love just get it. get to bop around Europe or oh, wherever. Yes, <laughs> for talking to different winemakers, forming relationships with all of yeah. them, shooting the shit, and um, bringing some cool ones that trust you into the United States. And like, I don't know, it's building a brand, all yeah. these names that I listed off, you know, you could, you build an identity and you you pick and choose um, the wines that you want to bring in the United States just as the winemakers would pick and choose who they want to be represented by. Yeah. So you build a profile on like a brand that's, you know, obviously Sounds like a or Remington ours would be a natural dream job. Dream, a dream job. So any importers out there who have internships or, there you know, you need, need extra help, you know, hit me up. Perfect. Hit me up. <laughs> Let's talk about another category okay. of helpful hints to spot natural wine on the shelves. So we kind of men mentioned the Vin de France or Vin d'Espagne. Totally. We can get into that more. Yes. So on the label, if it's from like Sonoma or Napa or Bordeaux, um, Beaujolais, Burgundy, like that's generally prominently displayed yeah. on the label. Like you're, you're proud of those things. Those are appellations or regions that have rules about how you can make your wine and how it should be grown. Like the, this is like thousand hundred year old thousand year stuff. That's like totally that's like 
steadfast and important, but you know, natural wine, it's been around forever. I mean, this is nothing new, but there's like a new renaissance lately. And a lot of new school natural winemakers in like France or Spain, for instance, have decided to say, screw it. I'm making wine in the Loire or Burgundy or Bordeaux, but I'm not going to abide by their rules because there are strict rules there about are. like they, they test your wines mm -hmm. for impurities, volatile acidities. Yep. Um, the list goes on and on. So a quick which, little story. Which is kind of why we mentioned in a previous episode that if you are kind of at a loss and trying to find something natural and, you know, none of these tips are helping you and you can't figure it out and highly oh, unlikely that yeah. you're, that the wine store wouldn't be able to help you out. But just in case, you know, it's always good to go with like an Italian or, or a French wine just because of what Remington just said, that they do have such strict they do. Um, rules and, and testings and things they do. So it's, it is, it is like when you're in a pinch and a great thing to do is, you know, grab a Bordeaux. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a steadfast rule, but it's a, it's yes. a good tip. Yeah. It's one of Mrs. Favorite tips. It is. But uh, Remington has a great story. Quick I, he just told me today. Quick little story. <laughs> that I learned, you know, pretty recently as well, but how the Vigne de France kind of came about. So there was this French winemaker um, and his name was Sebastian David. So I'll take some too. I'll let you pour me a little was, extra. Sebastian that. David. And he was producing a biodynamic wine in the Loire. Um, and there was a big fuss when he got audited. Uh, by, I don't know, the French association that, that audits wines in order for him to call his, you know, wine from the Loire Valley or from this appellation and, and so on. And they found that three of his bottles had too high of VA or volatile acidity. And um, they said, you, you, you can't serve this. You can't, um, you can't mass produce it. You have to destroy this. So he had to destroy 2,000 bottles of oh my God. his beautiful wine, I mean, yes, you it did. Could have sent it to us. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll still drink be drinking it, it today. <laughs> um, this happened in 2016, so mm -hmm. we had gone we still, through a decent amount of it. We might have a couple bottles left, <laughs> but just a couple. That's right. <laughs> That's crazy. But yeah, they made him destroy it, um, primarily because he was like a natural winemaker, biodynamics, didn't believe in a lot of additives. You know, shared a lot of ethos, like like we care about in our wine, and he probably didn't add a lot of preservatives. He probably didn't add any sulfur or yeah. if any, just a teeny bit. And that can cause your wine to vary a little bit. So, you know, and volatile acidity. Yeah. It's a, it's a fault. A little bit is nice. A lot is not. And we yeah. can talk about faults on a different episode, but really sad stuff. This guy was like, you know, screw, I don't like the GameStop thing. And mm -hmm. you know, what's happening with the investing world, like screw big corporate, Yeah, you know, we're not going to play by their rules. And they said, you know, I, I don't need the special French designation on my label to say that I'm from, you know, the Loire or Burgundy or whatever. Let's just call it Vigne de France. Table wine, it. which is the table wine designation in France, which yeah. is like the lowest tier. But everybody hopped on board. Not everybody. A lot of people hopped on board. Yeah, which and, is awesome. Um, this other cool shout out to this guy named Adam Verbulis, Verbulis. Him and Marissa have a wine podcast. Wine podcast mm -hmm. called oh, Natural Disasters, and he is making wine in Pasadena, and I think he embodies a Vina California on his label as kind of just a oh, fun, fun play on you know not saying Sonoma or Napa prominently, but just like table wine from California. I love that. So I think that's really cool. Um, you know kind of giving the middle finger to the, to the establishment, <laughs> but Hey, it's, it's a movement, you know, it it's, a, a movement. it's a movement. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the story on long winded story on looking for Vina, Vina France or Vina España, Vina Italy. If you see that there could be a good chance that it's yeah. a natural wine. Um, cool. it's kind of like the little tidbit that I have there for you guys. I love it. Lastly. And we kind of already talked about, Label, Label art, art. <laughs> a little bit, but yeah, I mean, I mean, this is this is truly kind of just this one's really funky looking. Like this is what yeah. it, this isn't your typical take French this, looking. Take this tip with a, with a grain of salt because it certainly is not always the case. Believe me, you can get some really terrible wine that have very cool funky 
hipster labels. So, you know, this is not like a rule of thumb, but if you've already tried a couple of our other tips, you know, you checked the the importer, the distributor, and you you think that it could be a natural. Another great thing to look at is the label. Is it quirky? Is it fun? Normally, if they're more artistic, like hand drawn. Yeah, like some I've seen like their kids' as drawings as yeah. the labels. The, I've seen some almost. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. It, it makes you laugh, and you're like, okay. Yeah. So like very <laughs> um, look for non traditional. If it looks stuffy, you know it probably yeah, that's isn't. A good tip. A, it probably isn't a, a super line. stuffy label, and yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. Like no, not those at all. lines are beautiful in their own way. Mm-hmm. They could be made partially in the natural style. They could be for sure. This is just it's not a step fast rule. It's just a tip. If you yeah. see some crazy labels like this, I'm showing the video footage here for so, the, for the YouTubers. Up one of our a, a Brock Sellers Red. It's love called Red. Love. Just and a bunch of hearts on the label. Yeah, it's a black label with a bunch of little white hearts. It's so cute. This is called Los Pilares by La Dona down in San Diego. Just real simple. There's no chateaus. It doesn't look stuffy. I love that Not word. a lot of boxes and lines. It doesn't look <laughs> stuffy. Yeah. Then it could be yeah. a if natural it, wine. If it's a cool label, it could be a natural wine. Not so, for sure. I mean, believe me, there's this one of my favorite labels that I've ever. What? Um, it's oh. so cool. It's not a natural, I don't think. Um, which, I, I wish it was. Which, which it's one? called Sexual Chocolate. Oh, it's delicious. Yeah. It's delicious, it... number one. It's, it's not a natural, but it's delicious. But what I do love is the label Sexual. is just this long handwritten, you know, two paragraph explanation on how these, I think they were friends, these guys who just wanted to create a wine that like would go with like pizza and beer oh. and, and would just be super simple and not stuffy. And at the end, and I think they, something in there about like picking up girls and <laughs> at the end, like they, they leave their phone number oh my <laughs> on the label. We need to look into this because like who's ever making this sounds like super they, fun, super fun. <laughs> and if they're not making natural wine, we, yeah. we need to. Yeah. Get in their ear and, and if it is, think they're on And if level. I'm mistaken and it is a natural, then my bad. Um, I don't believe it is, but it's still delicious and the label is awesome. But all that to say that, uh, yeah, this is not like a rule of thumb. It's just kind of like a, you know, one a thing helpful to check. hint. A helpful if thing you check. see a watercolor drawing of a stick figure with a horse in a pasture, <laughs> probably a natural one. Probably but that's, definitely that's, a natural wine. This is hilarious because we're saying like the more effed up the label and more non-traditional, yeah. the more natural it probably yeah. is. But yeah. it, it it's it's kind of the trend at the moment. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you're listening here in 2021, that's it's kind of what, what the deal is right now. So look for label art that might not have totally. the chateaus and look extra stuffy. Exactly. Um, okay, well, let's talk a little bit about some tips on Ooh. like this is a big one buzzwords that trick you to think that the wine may be a natural, but definitely totally. does not mean it is. If anything, like the worst wine you could maybe get at the store. Yeah. Um, for, so there's some bu- buzzwords that are just marketing to trick you for <laughs> all of our, you know, like listeners and new listeners and mm-hmm. friends of mine that are reaching out and being like. Oh, you know, I'm I'm here at the store and I like see it says like sulfur free or see it says this. Yes. And it's like six dollars. Like, no. you know, isn't it gonna be natural? So do not buy it. <laughs> first off, I love Trader Joe's for a bazillion reasons. We could do a whole podcast <laughs> on why we love Trader we Trader Joe's traders. for a bazillion reasons. But not for their six dollar wine. Two buck chuck. <laughs> And now they're three buck chuck, which is Charles Shaw organic. Uh-huh. They have three buck chuck. And for an extra dollar, you can get Charles Shaw organic, which, hey. Is not a natural wine. Organic's nice, though. Organic. <laughs> organic. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it's tricky, right? Because it it's sounds not anything great. I want to drink. No. So Do not, let's, you don't want to drink it. Trader Joe's, unfortunately, if you want to buy natural wine, you can't shop there yes. uh, for your natural wine. They have. They have. They have a good selection if you're not in the natural one, yeah. but great. sadly you can't find naturals. There. Great selection if you're not looking for a natural. But and, and so, no three buck chuck is in that. So basically, an important thing, a tricky buzzword to to just watch out for is when it says made with organic grapes. Yes. Because okay, think about all the components of wine making and all the components that go into um, the mm-hmm. final thing that you pour into your cup. The grapes 
in their organic form originally is just one very, very small part of it. And sure, they could, they could important, use an important part, part, but not, not the whole shebang. So <laughs> they can be using organic grapes and then dumping a shit ton of sugar in there. They can be dumping all kinds of chemicals to make it taste different. Killing the native yeast, using the modified native yeast, yeah, yeast all kinds of stuff additives, lots of sulfur, lots of preservatives. More sugar to make it higher in alcohol content. Totally. Um, so Mega purples, all of those things that we had things. spoken about before. So if it is made with organic grapes, it is, and especially if they say on the label made with organic grapes, that to me is a sign it's not a natural wine. Yeah. Because I don't know that many natural it's, wines that would ever put that like so prominently on their label. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to steer yeah. you clear because it should be something you should be proud of. Like for a natural winemaker, like if you get the certification, like it's yeah. it's. It could be a big deal. Like there's a little rigmarole to get the certification and whatnot. But if yeah. it's like super prominent, it says made with organic grapes and it's less than ten dollars. Yeah, it's not a natural. Not a natural wine. It's not. Psst. It just isn't. <laughs> little secret. You can't buy natural wine for less than ten dollars. No, I'm sorry. Unfortunately. You can't. I wish. I know. Well, <laughs> I wish. Do we? We'd be a lot fatter. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, the best. I haven't seen it. The any cheapest of these. bottle of decent natural wine I've ever seen was like sixteen, seventeen dollars. Fifteen. I've seen yeah. fifteen. Yeah. So yeah. So like this one, for instance, the Kerfluffle that we're drinking in their little stick says all vineyards associated with purity are farmed organically. Yeah. ingredients great totally but they're not like advertising they're not advertising it like Made in a big stamp grapes. on their label so but i think we need a whole pod on um we need to uh what's the word i'm looking for uh, we need to start a movement mm -hmm. for petitioning for an ingredients label on wine i agree that would be this great. one says ingredients grapes which i love a lot of times you'll see on natural wine labels ingredients grapes native True. yeast four parts per million added That's sulfur or whatever. I, I love That's that. Like people should know, we know what's in Coca-Cola. True. We know it's bad for you. <laughs> we know it has a shit ton of sugar, high fructose corn syrup, all that jazz. People think they're just drinking fermented grapes here. Yeah. You're not, not, not the most case. of the time. Totally. I want to know what's inside my Me wine. I, I mean, we want to know what's inside all of our food. At least I do. Yeah. I mean, we look at the labels of that all you the look time. look at it. So of course we want to. A lot. All right. Well, we just got a couple minutes left here. Okay. So we got to So really wrap quickly, up. let's talk about sulfites. If you also see like a sulfite free wine, um, that's probably a, a big hint that it might not be a natural. Yes. People think sulfites give them hangovers and that's why, you know, wine is bad and you got to go to natural wine. Well, sorry to break it to you. In the US, you can have up to 350 parts per million mm -hmm. of added sulfites in a wine. Meanwhile, apricots, dried apricots, a serving of that can have a thousand upwards of two thousand parts per million. Yeah. French fries, same thing. Bottled juices, same thing. So it might not be the sulfites. It's kind of a marketing shtick. People are like, sulfites, bad, hangover. One percent of the population is allergic. That's probably not the shtick. Yeah. So don't get caught in that trap of really? sulfite free, and that's all you know it for. Yeah. Um, I mean, again, like all of these are just helpful. Like we said, there's no sticker, natural wine sticker yet. So these are just. I, I, I want one. I, I want an ingredients I want list. Too. And, and I the want natural a wine natural sticker. wine sticker of Sam. But. Um, in my lifetime. You just have to do the work right now. You got to do the homework. Um, Memorize gotta, some importers. Some we'll, importers. We'll have to, I'll do a post on our social um, naming the importers and the it's distributors that we talked about. So you can reference that. He just um, doesn't want me bugging store. him anymore. In my this is for Miss. <laughs> I'm a DMer. The post once once it's all done right. as well. Well, we got to wrap up here, but we love you guys and thanks so much for all the support from friends and family. Yeah, you guys have really just encouraged us so much and made us. If you've been make listening more, since day one. You're the best. Thank you. Thank you're on you. episode five. Yeah. You are cruising. You are learning so much, and now you know how to spot natural wine. No matter if you're at the Cisco in Kansas. Or the Safeway there in Los go. Angeles. Actually, can't find it in, in no. the Safeways. But. Well, we love you guys. Um, Remington, thank you so much for all of your amazing tips. Of and, course. Uh, we will see you guys next time. All right. Peace out. Bye. Happy drinking. Go Natty or go home. Cheers.